Good morning and welcome. It is good to share and worship with you this morning. Please take a moment to prepare for communion by gathering a bit of bread and a cup of a drink that is sacred to you. And finally, if you're visiting with us today, we wish you an especially warm welcome. If you are interested in staying connected with our church, please email us at office at westwooducc.org. You'll also find the information on our website, westwooducc.org, and can reach us there. Welcome again. Let us gather ourselves for worship with our centering song. We are born. pray. Oh God, you are here and we are yours. You call us out of our unseen depths, our unhearing struggles. You deliver us from all the places that separate us from each other, that separate us from you. You call us together, God, from every corner of the earth, making us witnesses of your glory. You liberate our souls and make a way for us to emerge into your grace. And in that grace, you do a new thing. Oh God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we may perceive your new thing happening even now. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43, 1 through 21. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. Flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring forth the people who are blind, yet have eyes who are deaf and have ears. Let all the nations gather together and let the peoples assemble. Who among them declared this and foretold to us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to justify them and 
let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed, and there is no strange God among you. <clears throat> And you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am he. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars, and the shouting of the Chaldeans will be turned to lamentation. I am the Lord, your Holy One, creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who made a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. This ends our reading. This is a sermon I've been waiting nearly 16 months to preach. The last one I hope that I will preach to my screen all alone. The last one before more than two of us step foot into the sanctuary at one time on Sunday morning. The last before I can look up and see faces across the room as well as faces on the screen. It's a precipice kind of a moment just before we leap into something new. So it seems appropriate to be reading a precipice kind of text today. This passage from the book of Isaiah has long been one of my favorites. Ever since I was in seminary and I preached it together with my good friend Blythe, she and I have thought of it as our scripture. She even had the first few lines made into a beautiful piece of art when Riley was born. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your savior. I've always loved the unequivocal commitment found in these words, a covenant in just a few lines. Look, God says, I'm here. No matter what, I'm here. No matter what you go through, no matter what you face, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to be right beside you. No matter how scary, no matter how all-consuming, no matter what comes, I'm here the whole time. I'm here the whole way. This word of God through Isaiah comes near the beginning of second Isaiah as the Israelites are nearing the end of their exile in Babylon. Having been stolen and shipped away from their homes, they've lived for years in exile, trying to make the best of things, trying to build houses and plant gardens and live in their new normal place and way, instead of always looking ahead with longing or back with regret. And after all that time, all those years, the people are just now beginning to believe it's possible that they will emerge from this time apart, this time away from what was normal, and that they will soon be able to go home again. Indeed, just as powerful as God's insurance, assurance of constant presence is God's commitment to gather the people together. 
because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up and to the south, do not withhold. Not only does God plan to call the people from all the corners of their physical exile, their social distancing, as it were, God also promises to call them from their more spiritual captivity, from their inability to see, from their unwillingness to hear, from the apathy that allows them not to know. And even, we imagine, from all the struggle and the fear and the anxiety and the overwhelm that have kept them more locked up than any physical distance from their true home. Through the voice of Isaiah, God is calling the Israelites to emerge, not just from Babylon, but from every possible thing that's holding them back, from every possible barrier that's keeping them from God and God from them. I'm about to do something new, God tells the people. In fact, it's already happening. Can you see it? Can you hear it? Can you perceive it? Emerge from your confinement, God says. Emerge into new life. It is a really strange moment in the world right now. And how many times have we said that in the past year and a half? But really, it is. This is the moment of transition. The moment of doing something truly new. It's not the moment of fleeing into exile or distance. We've done that. It's not even the moment of every single barrier being toppled, bars flying off of windows and people bounding out into the streets. It's not quite that dramatic or that clear. This is real life after all, not the movies. Instead, we find ourselves taking one step at a time, some days feeling confident, some days still feeling fearful emerging, but not all at once. I think we hoped when all of this COVID life first started that it would end just as dramatically as it all felt like it began, that as quickly as we had locked down, we would open up. The reality has been much more complex than that. We thought we'd come out of our caves into the sunshine and be able to see again more fully Forgetting that whenever we emerge from a tunnel or a cave of any kind into the light, it takes a moment for our eyes to adjust, right? At the beginning, light is just as blinding as the darkness ever was. So it turns out that we're a little more like tortoises and a little less like hares. Instead of bounding towards the finish line. We peek our heads out of our shells and put our feet out to take a few steps, then stop and pull everything back in when the news changes or the recommendations shift or just whenever we feel uncertain or unsure. And that may just be how it's gonna be, moving forward and then moving back, stopping and starting, taking gradual steps into this new world and its new life. And as many times as I've read and studied today's scripture, it's never before occurred to me that it may have been that way for the Israelites as well. Sure, scholars talk about 1st Isaiah and 2nd Isaiah and 3rd Isaiah, kind of the before, during, and after parts of exile. But we don't usually remember that exile can take some time to actually end. Even when the people finally left Babylon, they still had to travel home again. They didn't magically get transported back where they'd come from. They walked step by step, moment by moment. So it's no wonder that the first thing God tells them in this chapter is that God will be with them no matter what. Because there might still be some storms. They might still pass through some waters as they have in the past. Might still walk through fire as they already have. The people will emerge from their exile one actual step at a time. But if they can put the past in its proper perspective and look at the same time toward the hope that's to come, then they will begin to see their way forward. Then they'll find the strength and the courage to carry on. Then they'll see and hear and perceive and know the path God has laid for them, the one 
where God leads every step of the way. Last week on vacation, my family spent several days in a condo by the ocean. And every morning we had a visitor. On the rocks outside our condo, visible from the balcony, we spied a sea turtle. She arrived every morning between 10 and 10.30, just like clockwork. Surfing in on a wave, she'd find a place on the black lava rocks to sun herself and rest a while. And every morning, some collection of people would wander by to see her. Sea turtles are protected, so no one got too close to her. But a couple of times, I went down to sit next to her, 15, 20 feet away next to her, as she perched on the rocks. It was a really moving experience. I felt like I could have sat there and stared at her all day long. Seven-year-old was not patient enough to allow that to happen. But once in a while, some brash soul would whistle to try to get the turtle's attention. Hey, look over here. And at one point I was looking at her and she was looking at me. And I swear to you, if she could have managed to roll her eyes, that is what she would have done. Sea turtles are a little different from land tortoises. They can't actually pull their heads or their flippers into their shells when they're startled or uncertain. So this turtle did the next best thing. She closed her eyes to block out the disturbance. Kind of a classic take on the, if I can't see you, then you're not really there move. But even though she closed her eyes, she didn't leave a rock. She stayed right there until the tide rose up and swept her back into the ocean. And no matter how brash and loud these crazy humans were, she returned each day, coming back every morning to claim her place, no matter how nervous or annoyed anyone made her. She kept showing up, emerging from the sea again and again. I can't help but think that's how God is calling us now, as God did the Israelites so many years ago, calling us out of our caves, out of our distances, out of the ocean, calling us together, family to each and to all, calling us to be witnesses to courage, to keep emerging out of fear and into hope, out of pain and into healing, out of struggle and into grace, into a new thing, one we might just barely perceive, emerging over and over and over again into life a step at a time, with God leading the way. May it be so. Amen and amen. Would you sing together with me, In the Bulb There is a Flower.
As we come to communion, I would invite you to gather up the bread and cup that you have prepared. We will lift and bless them together in just a moment. I'm about to do a new thing, God says. Do you not perceive it? The truth is we can't always perceive it. At times we don't even see the change coming. Other times we know it's coming, but we have no way to understand how it will happen, how it will impact us. I wonder sometimes if the disciples sitting at the Last Supper had any understanding of the way their lives were about to change. Jesus kept saying a new thing was coming, but did they believe him? Could they perceive it? Did they have open enough minds to imagine what was coming? Did they have open enough hearts to welcome what was on the way? It's the same set of questions we ask ourselves whenever we anticipate new things in our lives. But whether or not we can perceive the new thing coming, we are strengthened and comforted by the knowledge that wherever we're going, however we'll get there, Jesus is going with us. He refuses to leave us alone. It's the message he gave to his friends at their Holy Supper. It's the message he gives to us at ours. For whenever and however we gather together, whenever and however we meet at this meal, we know that this table is not my table. It's not your table. It's Christ's table. And he will always make a way to feed our bodies and our souls. Jesus took the bread as we do together now. He broke it and blessed it. He gave it to them and said, take and eat. I give myself to you. We take and eat and are fed by Christ's love. Then he lifted the cup as we do and gave thanks for it and shared it with them. Drink deeply, he said, of a promise of grace for now and forevermore. We lift and drink and are nourished by Christ's grace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us listen and join in singing Seed Scattered and Sown.
we mostly sing at Easter, there's something about the song, In the Bulb There is a Flower, that seems to fit any time we join in prayer together. The second verse especially reminds me of our prayers of the people. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, when it holds a mystery unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Sometimes we have all the words in the world to express our prayers. Other times it's all we can do to sit in silence and trust that God hears our hearts, even when our mouths can't speak. And sometimes, many times, it's enough just to sit in the same room or see each other on screen and know we are holding each other in our hearts, know we are carrying each other's prayers to be accompanied in the midst of the mystery where God alone can see. Let us join our hearts together as we continue in prayer. Holy one, you hold on to us. You walk beside us. You carry us forward when we need your strength. We pray God that you will remind us of all the ways that we can walk through fire with you. And maybe we are a bit singed, but we're not consumed. Give us the courage to step more and more into the world. Give us the wisdom to discern when to be cautious and when to take a risk. Give us the protection and the healing and strength, we pray, O oh God, now and always. Amen. For all the petitions that have been shared, we know others are still quiet in our hearts. Let us take a moment now to lift them up silently as we rest in God's care. We join now in praying together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I, I did write a call to the offering for today. However, uh, you're I've decided that you're just going to have to listen to me ramble because this service made my written call to the offering not very adequate. And so, uh, as you know, on the I mentioned before, on the first Sunday of the month, I sit at my dining room table and write my check to the offering. And as I write it, I think about the things that I'm grateful for. So this morning, as I sat there and I had written the check and I had the check there in front of me, and I went through email and text messages and messages on Facebook Messenger from not only people in this congregation, but literally people all over the world. I couldn't even tell you how many total there are that have written me words of encouragement, support for George and me at this time. As you heard earlier, George had his uh, first chemo treatment on Thursday. It was a long, rough day. I dropped him off at nine, picked him up at five, um, partly because the they, the first treatment, they do the infusion very slowly to uh, uh, your body time to adjust as you're taking this poison. On Friday, he was feeling reasonably good. <laughs> um, but then Saturday morning, he got up. And uh, I said, so how are you this morning? Aware that he had gotten up several times during the night. Um, 
wandering around. And he said, I feel as if I have been dropped out of a helicopter into the parking lot of a Walmart. Well, I found that very amusing because uh, to my knowledge, George has never been to a Walmart in his life. But at any rate, um, to, today he is feeling even worse. He's had hiccups uh, more or less nonstop since uh, early on. What I'm getting at is that Again, in the scripture today, one of my favorite scriptures, and of course, the song that you all have heard me sing a number of times, and that uh, I have probably sung at this point well over a hundred times in various places in such a way. You are mine. Do not be afraid. I am with you. You know, and I know. God is with me because you help me. And before I cry, we're going to take up the offering. And Aaron's going to put the link in the chat to give online. Or you can do the old-fashioned way like I do and write that check and mail it to you. Let us sing together. Freedom is coming. As we prepare for the benediction, I invite you to hold your hands up to the edges of your Zoom box so we are palm to palm. We see that we are together and remember that we are one. People of God, God is calling us from captivity into freedom, from struggle into hope. Let us go now together to emerge into life. Amen. <laughs>